Welcome everyone and good morning to this April 19th Board of County Commissioners meeting, issues and updates. Administrator Gary Schmidt, you're up. Thank you, Chair Smith. First, uh, Commissioner Savas and Commissioner Schrader are out of the office today, so that's why they are not here. We are going to jump ahead on the agenda with a very special and exciting update for you, Commissioners. I'm so proud. We have an award to present to a county employee, uh, the Department of Defense Patriot Award. So I'm going to first ask Deborah Cockrell, who's the county's uh, uh, health center's director, uh, to introduce our guests, and she'll start the presentation off. So Deborah, welcome. Please come forward. Good morning. Really proud to be here today to introduce to you Dr. Celine Edwards, Health Center Dental Director, Dr. Casey Norlin, one of our dentists at the Beaver Creek Health Center, and Bob Wentis from the Oregon Army National Guard. That may be incorrect on Mr. Wentis. Please but come on forward, everyone. Thank you, Deborah. Could you come right to the testimony table, please. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you missed the door. <laughs> uh, can we pull up a chair for our third um, recipient here? Yes, we'll do that right now. Oh, here you go. We you have go, one. Right Thank you very much. Thank you. So, first up, please introduce yourself. Okay. Scoot My name over, is. Scoot over, bit. scoot over toward the middle. I think the microphone right. might move. Yeah, you can move the microphone in front of you. You okay. may move them. There you go. I've never been in court before. That's okay. We just want to make sure you're heard. <laughs> okay. So please state your name. My name is Bob Windus, uh, US, U.S. Army uh, Colonel Retired, and I'm here representing the Department of Defense. And I belong to an organization made up primarily of volunteers. And it's called Employer Support of the Garden Reserve. And that organization was created 50 years ago, and it administers a federal law referred to as USERA, Uniform Services Employment Reemployment Rights Act. And for myself, uh, I served in Vietnam 52 years ago, and that law did not exist. And so when I returned from Vietnam, uh, I was shown the door several times when I applied for employment. And I was stationed at Presidio, San Francisco, and I figured, wow, I had my degree commanded a unit that I'd be hot commodity on the employment market. Once they found that I was a veteran and currently serving member of the military, they, they didn't want any part of me. And so I told myself when I retired, ooh, a long time ago now, uh, that I would try and help veterans and currently serving service members. So I got involved in the ESGR program. And under that program, again, Department of Defense, they have a awards program that recognizes outstanding employers, supervisors, et cetera. And uh, your organization uh, has nominated two employees, one of which I understand has moved. And uh, we have Celine here today. And uh, the program recognizes uh, people that have gone, gone above and beyond in terms of taking care of their active duty Guard or Reserve member. And Casey Norlin here has nominated Celine for this award. And so I'd like to present this award. And these are not handed out like candy. The nomination goes from the soldier to the Department of Defense. And it's reviewed and then approved up there and sent back down to somebody like myself. Wow. And so this is the award. It's presented to Celine as a patriotic <coughs> employer for contributing to the national security and protecting liberty and freedom by supporting employee participation in America's National Guard and Reserve Force. And when I talk about Department of Defense, the National Guard and the Reserve comprise approximately 50% of the military strength in the United States. And so that means that the operational tempo is extreme. And now in Casey's case, a lot of active duty has been levied on National Guard and Reserve soldiers for the COVID event. And that has taken a lot of soldiers here in Oregon uh, to serve that uh, mission. 
So I'd like to present this to you and hopefully you'll get a photograph. Would you like, I would like to have a photo op with both of them together. Oh, okay. Could you present the second award, please? Uh, yes, I will. And it goes to, and you'll mail this one, I assume. This is presented to Carrie Arabello. Is that pronounced correctly? Arinello. I'm sorry? Arinello. Arinello. Okay. Is that spelled right? And instead of the B, it should be an N. Okay. Oh. Then I'll get that corrected. <laughs> but anyway, the award's here, and we'll get this corrected before okay. I send it. Okay. And, then and the where last... does he work? Where does he work, the, uh, this award, this recipient? She has since left the county. Oh, right. uh, okay. She's what did she do? She was our clinic manager. Clinic manager, thank you. Okay. And the last one I have is for Clackamas Health Centers, and it's referred to as a statement of support presented by the Department of Defense. And this we'd like to have or request be on the information board someplace so all your customers and clients can see that the county supports the National Defense Program in the United States via the National Guard and Reserve Programs. And that's called a statement of support. And I assume that you could be the one that signs this. I don't know. I will be more than happy and thrilled to sign something so wonderful as that. And this one's signed by the Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin. Okay, good. And so I've got those three awards. Um, would you like to have a photo op now? Yes, please. And commissioners, will you join this photo op, please? I would, we'd be happy to. We'll line up right in front here. I'd like to mention the Clackamas County Sheriff's Department. I see they're here. And a few years ago, they recognized with the Freedom Award through the ESGR program, which is the highest award that can be levied on anybody in the United States. Wow. And they, about, usually about 15,000 uh, are nominated each year, and they were one of just a handful of organizations that were recognized with the national award. Thank you. So you can hold this one. That's supposed to be what? Okay. All right. Um, get you centered. On three. One, two, three, and a couple more. Good. Great. Thank you Perfect. very much. Thank you very much. It's always nice that we uh, Clackamas County employees are honored for their service uh, above beyond the call of duty. Thank you very much for that. Gary, what's up next? Yes, uh, thank you, and thank you to our outstanding employees, as always. Next, uh, we'll, the board will meet as a housing authority of Clackamas County. Chair, if you would please announce that. I will now recess as the Board of County Commissioners and reconvene as a housing authority of Clackamas County. Uh, next is, for the Housing Authority of Clackamas County, a request for consent agenda, and it is adoption of a resolution authorizing a payment in lieu of taxes agreement between a Malala Apartments Limited Partnership, the Housing Authority of Clackamas County, and Clackamas County Housing Assistance Payment Contract and related matters for the Malala Apartments Project. Total value is $500,000. No county general funds are involved. Devin Ellen is the program manager at the Housing Authority. Uh, Denise Swanson is the Deputy Director of Health, Housing, and Human Services. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Chair Smith, Commissioners, Gary and Tony. I'm Denise Swanson, Deputy Director for Health, Housing and Human Services, serving for Rod, who is homesick today. I'm glad uh -oh. to say that he's staying home and being well. So I'm going to immediately turn this over um, to Devin, who's the Director of Development. And we also have with us um, Ben Prey, who's the Director, uh, the developer of the Malala Apartments, and our amateur photographer today as well. So Ben, will you join us? Thank you. 
So you have like one minute. Okay. Go, Good morning, commissioners. Um, I'm bringing before you today a payment in lieu of taxes or pilot agreement to support the development of 60 units of affordable housing in the city of Malala. So building on the discussion we had last time, um, I was in front of you and further outlined in your packet, property tax exemptions are an effective way to support the development of affordable housing units. They allow the developer to take on more debt, a larger mortgage, allowing them to finance more of the development. Uh, property tax exemptions are especially effective in locations outside the UGB where um, sources like the Metro housing bond are not available. Um, so in this case, Ben reached out to the housing authority about partnering for a property tax exemption because they have a gap in their pro forma. Um, and as we've previ previously discussed, Oregon state statutes allow housing authorities to extend PTE, uh, property tax exemptions, to uh, affordable housing properties even when the authority has an extremely limited role in the development. Um, so in this case, the developers um, can't, can't pay their full property tax liability, but they're saying in, in lieu of taxes, we wanna pay $25,000 a year for 20 years. Um, and then we can work out a distribu distribution uh, schedule with um, assessment and taxation on you know, how those, um, that this pilot is just distributed to the taxing districts. So okay, that. commissioners, any questions, comment, Commissioner Fisher? Yeah, so what is the um, cost? You said 500,000, is that the amount of money that the would not be going to the taxing districts over the course of the said 20 years? Yes, that's correct. Uh, is that it, Sonia? Yep. Commissioner Sonia? That answered my question. Oh, okay. Uh, any further comments on this? Any objections to moving forward? Seeing none, thank you for coming forward. Okay. Thank you, and thank we'll you. add it to this Thursday's consent agenda. Uh, Chair, if you now would reconvene as the Board of Commissioners, please. I now recess as a Housing Authority of Clackamas County, and we will reconvene as the Board of County Commissioners for the next items. Gary, what's up next? Thank you, Chair. Next is the regular county consent agenda request. We'll start with community corrections. First, approval of an amendment to a time extension to an intergovernmental agreement between Clackamas County Community Corrections and Portland State University. No county general funds are involved. Captain Malcolm McDonald is the Director of Community Corrections. Go ahead. Good morning, Commissioners and Gary. Um, this is just a time extension for an agreement that's already been before the board, so there's no changes or impact to the okay. financially. Thank you. Any objections to this going forward? Or any comments, Commissioners? Seeing none, thank you, Malcolm. Item two, approval of an inter intergovernmental agreement between Clackamas, Clackamas County Community Corrections and Lane County for the partial reimbursement of the Evidence-Based Practices Coaches Academy Pilot Training Project. Total value is $2,475. Funding is through a state of Oregon. Department of Corrections grant and aid. No county general funds are involved. This is a project between three counties. This is just a, receiving the funds from the county to pay for their portion of the training we're doing. Any objections, questions going forward? Seeing none. Item three, approval of an intergovernmental agreement between Clackamas County Community Corrections and Washington County for the partial reimbursement of the Evidence-Based Practices Coaches Academy pilot training project. Total value is $2,475. Funding is through the State of Oregon, State of Oregon Department of Corrections grant and aid. No county general funds are involved. Again, just an agreement for Washington County to pay for their portion of the training. And the objections to moving forward? Seeing none. Item four, approval of a subrecipient grant agreement between Clackamas County Community Corrections and court appointed special advocates for foster children for community-based victim services. Total grant value is $30,311.12, funded by the State of Oregon Criminal Justice Commission. No county general funds are involved. This is funding received um, via justice reinvestment that we applied for. 3% goes to victim services, and these victim services organizations were selected by the local public safety coordinating council, so it's passed through. Any questions? No objections? Item five, approval of a subrecipient agreement between Clackamas County Community Corrections and Children's Center for Community-Based Victim Services. Total grant value is $23,227.20, funded by the State of Oregon Criminal Justice Commission. No county general funds are involved. Again, the same as the previous, it's justice reinvestment funding for victims, in Clack victims organizations in Clackamas County. Any questions, any objections to this moving forward? Seeing none. Thank you, Malcolm. 
Thank you. Have a great yeah. day. Next, Health, Housing, and Human Services, Item 1, Adoption of a Resolution Authorizing Payment in Lieu of Taxes Agreement between Malala Apartments Limited Partnership, the Housing Authority of Clackamas County, and Clackamas County Housing Assistance Payment Contract and Related Matters to the Malala Pro Apartments Project. Total value is $500,000, funded by Malala Apartments Limited Partnership. No county general funds are involved. Denise Swanson is the Deputy Director of Health, Housing, and Human Services, Infrarod, who is out ill today. Go ahead, Denise. Good afternoon. This is the same one you just saw as the Housing Authority. Any questions, any objections going forward? Seeing none. Item two, approval of an amendment to the 2022 revenue agreement with the state of Oregon acting by and through the Oregon Health Authority for the operation and financing of community mental health, addiction treatment, recovery and prevention services and problem gambling, problem gambling programs. The amendment adds $724,561.09 to the value of the agreement, increasing the maximum total contract value to $9,107,562.79, funded through the state of Oregon, Oregon Health Authority. No county general funds are involved. So this one is just adding around $724,000 of additional funds for mobile crisis services. Any questions, comments, objections? Seeing none. Item three, approval of an amendment to the 2022 revenue agreement with the state of Oregon acting by and through its Oregon Health Authority for the operation and financing of community mental health, addiction treatment, recovery and prevention services and problem gambling programs. The amendment rescinds $25,000 provided through the initial award. The agreement maximum value contract is decreased to $9,082,562.79 funded through the state of Oregon, Oregon Health Authority. No county general funds are involved. So this one rescinds $25,000 due to funding shifts that OHA identified to support their non-OHP eligible individuals. Any so questions, objections going forward? Seeing none. Item four, approval to apply for funding available through the Oregon Health Authority request for application for Community Restor Restoration Services Aid and Assist Program. Funding is through the State of Oregon, Oregon Health Authority. No county general funds are involved. And there's no dollar amount listed, do you know that? Uh, um, we're going to apply for $500,000. Um, the legislature, um, OHA received an additional $15 million from the legislature in this last session um, to help um, with these aid and assist programs. Great. Yes. Don't want to leave any money laying on the table right. now, do we? <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you. Any objections or questions to this moving forward? Commissioner Fisher. Um, I was just, I always click into the link, and the link did not lead us to the sheet on this. I'll take care of that, ma'am. Okay, any objections to moving forward, Commissioner oh, Fisher? I don't understand this. I need to read it, but that's okay. I can give you a I will not object because I'm Thank sure you. I don't have a problem. Okay. <laughs> but I do really, and I don't know why our technology isn't working. So uh, Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Okay. Thank you. See you. No objections. Go ahead. Item five, approval of an amendment to an intergovernmental agreement with Multnomah County for Health Officer Services to Clackamas County Public Health Division. Total value of the amendment is $76,533. Total contract value not to exceed $109,601. Funded through county, but funded through budgeted county general funds. So this does pay, this is using general funds. Yes, and this is um, to provide public health and medical consultation through the Multnomah County Health Officer. So they'll be working with us with consultation. Any questions? No, uh, we've done this for quite some time, haven't we? I believe so. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. All right, item six, approval of a grant agreement with Providence Health and Services Oregon for the Help Me Grow program, contract not to exceed $80,000. Funding is through Providence Health and Services Oregon. No county general funds are involved. So Help Me Grow, as you probably know, is a system of collaboration and coordination across early childhood and health sectors to assure that families of children at risk for developmental delays and broader social determinants of health are identified and connected to the services and supports that they need. And rather than providing direct services, Help Me Grow focuses on enhancing the existing services and resources already in our community. Any questions? Any objections to moving forward? Seeing none. Item seven, approval of an intergovernmental agreement, amendment one with the state of Oregon, Department of Human Services, Aging and People with Disabilities Division for the provision of services to Clackamas County residents. Funding is through the Federal Older American Act and Federal American Rescue Plan funds. Total value is $7,276,070 funded through budgeted county general funds. So this doesn't make sense. Those are not all county general funds. I assume? No, I think the budgeted part is the um, match requirements that we have. You know what that total, what that amount is? Uh, let me fund. see here. Can anybody help in the audience with this? Brenda, please Brenda. come forward. 
Thank you, Brenda. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Brenda Durbin's the Social Services Director. Go ahead. Brenda. Good morning. Um, the um, match requirement is, <clears throat> oh my goodness, what's the match requirement? Um, is it this one here? So fiscal year for three million. Uh, to um, Tony has the answer. Tony, oh, thank, thank you, you Tony. <laughs> Total of $843,423 county funds over four years. Yes, and we'd be increasing 271000 in matching funds for this one. From county general fund? Correct. Gary, is this budgeted it for? It is budgeted currently. Okay, yes. roll-up costs for next year's budget as well? It is in the proposed budget that you'll be receiving here in another month, Commissioner. Okay, yes. any other comments or questions from commissioners? No. Okay. Thank you, team. Next, item eight, approval of intergovernmental agreement with Washington County and South Metro Area Regional Transit with House Bill 2017 State Transportation Improvement Fund Discretionary Program Funds for the I-205 Borland Road Bridgeport Village Pilot Transit Service. The funding source is House Bill 2017 discretionary funds from the state in the amount of $720,000. No county general funds are involved. So as noted, this is an IGA with Washington County and South um, Metro Area Regional Transit for the implementation of transit service that's going to connect um, Bridgeport Village to the Clackamas Town Center. Any questions or objections? Seeing none. Item 9, approval of a change order number 9 for various items such as facilities management requirements and county preferences for exterior signage, HVAC and cabling clearance issue, additional bandolin expenses directly related to an extended project schedule as well as project ship shipping delays for the Sandy Health Center project with bandolin construction. No county general funds are involved. So as we know, this is to continue building the Sandy um, Health Center, and we have some expenses, um, additional expenses to approve for that. And it's covered in contingency. Yes, ma'am. Very good. Yes. Any other further questions on this? Objections? Seeing none. Item 10, approval of a revenue grant agreement from the State of Oregon Early Learning Division to provide Clackamas Early Learning Hub coordination and support. The grant has a maximum value of $1,753,262. No county general funds are involved. So this is so that our um, children, family, community connections can operate our early learning hub, which is near and dear to my heart because that's the world I just came from. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great. Uh, any objections or questions? Seeing none. Item 11, approval to apply for a U.S. Department of Justice Office of Violence Against Women grant to improve criminal justice response to domestic violence, dating violence, stalking, and sexual assault in Clackamas County. The award would allow continuation of current program services provided by local organizations to improve criminal justice responses to domestic violence. The grant amount requested is $750,000 funded through the U.S. Department of Labor. No county general funds are involved. I think that one's fairly... Yeah, that's great. Nice. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. No objections. Item 12, approval of a loan forgiveness for the Red Lodge Transition Services Project funded with Community Development Block Grant funds. No county general funds are involved. So this is the one we're asking for loan forgiveness so that they can use um, the dollars for hopefully additional services and improvements. Any questions, objections to this moving forward? Seeing none, thank you. All right, thank you, Denise. Good job. Thank Your you first time much. before the board in this thank way. Thank you very, very much. Good. Goodbye. Uh, next, uh, transportation and development. Item one, approval of an intergovernmental agreement between Clackamas County and the city of Canby to transfer permitting authority and maintenance responsibility for a portion of South Ivy Street to the city. No county general funds are involved. Dan Johnson is the director of transportation and development. Go ahead. Thank you so much. Clackamas County currently has jurisdiction and maintenance responsibility for South Ivy Street in the city of Canby. Uh, the, in, this intergovernmental agreement addresses transferring rights and duties as road authority, including permitting authority, development of road standards, and maintenance responsibility to the city for a portion of Ivy Street. Um, essentially, the city will perform all construction and reconstruction, improvements or repairs and maintenance, review and issuance of access permits, establishment of roadway standards, everything that goes along with maintaining a road. Um, in short, though, I do want to notify the fact to the board, the county will t retain official jurisdiction of this portion of the roadway until jurisdiction of South Ivy is transferred at a future date. We already have an IGA in place to facilitate that. It's just a discussion around timing uh, to make uh, utility undergrounding an easier process for the city and their utility partners. That's all this is. And then are you going to come back and ask us for the official transfer later? The, other, the official transfer is already identified in an IGA, which was approved some time ago. Okay. Right. Yeah. I, thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any questions or objections to this? Nope. 
Thank you, Dan. Item two, approval of a contract with Eagle Elsner for the Webster Area Paving Project. Total value is $904,000, funded through the Community Road Fund, County Road Funds, and State Funds from House Bill 2017. No county general funds are involved. Webster Area Paving Project is coming forward. Essentially, it's a resurface about 1.2 miles of Webster um, and also include ADA ramp improvements. We are also pleased to inform the board we are including um, paving of up to eight local roads around this particular um, paving project. The project was advertised in accordance with ORS and LCRB rules on January 27th, 2022. Bids were publicly opened on March 1st. The county received five bids. After review of the bids, Eagle Elsner Incorporated was determined to be the lowest responsive bidder. Dan, you said funding came from House Bill 2017? Funding came from three sources, a community road fund, county, ro county road funds, and HB 2017. Which is? We track, we committed to the Board of County Commissioners when there was an increase with the HB 2017 funds that to track That is gas tax and or vehicle registration, the or both? Both. Thank at you, the state that's level. all I needed to yep. know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we are getting some benefit from the increased state gas tax and vehicle registration fee. Just want to make note of that. Any yep. other questions, Commissioners? Mark? Dan, you said it would include up to eight surrounding roads? Local roads, Local correct. Roads. We, we are directing the community road fund, that was one of the priorities with the community road fund dollars, was to pave local roads, which historically we haven't had the funding to do. But you said up to eight. There are eight. I can actually read them off if you want no, me no, to. No, no, no. Okay, they're in the packet. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Dan. Uh, finally, the assessment, Assessor's Office, Assessment and Taxation, Item 1, Approval of a Resolution Approving the Submission of the Assessor's County Assessment Functioning Finding, County Assessment Function Finding Assistance Grant Application for Fiscal Year 2022-2023. The total grant value is approximately $1.35 million. I'm confused. Is this our money or we're asking for is money that are coming into us? We're applying for a grant. Applying for a grant. Thank to you. Us so. And reduce the burden on the general fund. So we'll correct this. This is not funded through county general funds. Right. All right. Thank you. Hi. Tammy Little is the assessor. Thank you, Tammy. Go ahead. Good morning. Good morning, Chair Smith, Commissioners, Gary and Tony, is it? Yes. Nice Hi. to meet you. Thank you uh, for your time today um, to discuss our CAFA grant application. A board resolution is required to submit our grant uh, document to the Oregon Department of Revenue. CAFA, C-A-F-F-A, stands for County Assessment Function Funding Assistance. The grant was created in 1989. Uh, the annual grant helps Oregon counties cover costs for the state-mandated function of assessment and taxation. The uh, shared responsibility, which is partially funded by this grant, is generally defined as the annual maintenance of uh, real market value on all property in the county, creation of an assessment and taxation role, uh, timely appraisal of all Measure 50 exceptions, prompt resolution to appeals, appraisal, uh, and then also the calculation, collection, and distribution of taxes. The CAFA grant provides essential funding to help us meet these statutory requirements and remain in compliance. Funding for the grant comes from portions of document recording fees and a percentage of the interest collected on delinquent property taxes. The funds are forwarded to the Oregon Department of Revenue, which then redistributes the funds uh, to counties statewide. For fiscal year 23, the grant is forecasted to provide approximately 15% of the revenue to the assessor's office here in Clackamas County. And the CAFA grant request aligns with the performance Clackamas goal to build public trust through good government by providing funding to fairly and equitably administer Oregon's property tax system. And we respectfully request that the board uh, pass this resolution so that we can submit the grant to the Oregon Department of Revenue by the due date of May 1. Thank you. And how much are these grants? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Um, we are, we're projecting based on their forecasting oh. uh, 1.3 million, oh, I see. 1.35 okay. million that we'll get. Wow, that's really very nice, very nice. Very Any helpful. further questions or comments from commissioners? No objections. Thank you, Tammy, for coming Thanks. forward. Thank, Thank you. you. That ends the consent request. All of these items will go on this Thursday's business meeting That's agenda. Fine. Thank you. Next, a request for a public hearing on the county supplemental budget, and this hearing date will be in two weeks, May 5, 2022. 
Uh, there is a memo in your packet. Elizabeth Comfort is the finance director. Go ahead, Elizabeth. Thank you, Gary Administrator, and good morning, Chair Smith and Commissioners. Uh, per Oregon law, budget law found in ORS 294 requires a supplemental resolution before a fund or department exceeds its budget <coughs> spending limits. So today before you is our fourth supplemental budget request for eight items, totaling $25,670,949, and also for a public hearing uh, on May 5th. This supplemental request is a result of additional <coughs> fundings and also need to increase spending authority in some categories. Um, items number one and number two relate to the finance department, recognizing 21-22 assigned beginning balance revenue and then also um, increasing the operating expense for our financial <coughs> system support costs. And that's approximately one million and that was from a prior fiscal year. Item number three relates to the county fair, recognizing the uh, Corona State Fiscal Recovery Grant of $4.8 million. Uh, number six is related to H3S programs, recognizing additional federal and state revenue, grant revenue uh, to support uh, many opportunities, um, the emergency rental assistance program, low income uh, energy assistance, and approximately $16.7 million. Number seven relates to Health Centers Fund, recognizing its beginning fund balance, uh, which is Medicaid revenue, and then increasing the operating expenses and capital outlay by three and a half million. And then four and five relate to lottery fund and ARPA funding. We're reclassing about 4.3 million from operating um, just expenditures to special grants, special um, projects. So that allows, it's just reclassification of those same dollars, not increasing the total amount of the budget. <clears throat> and then finally, number eight increases our budget authority of just under 700,000 for TS, and that's recognizing revenue. So that is increasing the budget. Wow, that's a lot. It is a lot, and it keeps us in compliance it and uh, keeps the budget accurate, which is what we want. Any um, comments, questions for, uh, yes, Commissioner Scholl. Elizabeth. <clears throat> Could you clarify that these eight items have no negative impact on the general fund? Correct. No, that, that, is, it, is that correct? Yes. So these are either new income streams we have or just reallocating current funds. Yeah, okay. It's not, not Good. new stuff. It's just That's correcting clarified. the stuff you've already Good. probably okay. approved. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any objections to this moving forward? And Gary, we're going to have a hearing. On May 5th, yes. Great. Thank you. See you then, if not before. All right. Thank, thank you. you, Elizabeth. Uh, next, commissioners, uh, it is time that once again this year to renew the county's dues in the Association of O and C Counties Dues. This is not AOC. This is the Association of Oregon and California Lands Counties. Uh, the annual dues are $31,015.52. We have budgeted this amount. They are paid from general funds, but we've budgeted for it. So I'm seeking your approval to continue paying dues in the Association of ONC Counties. And I'd like to make a comment. We do receive funds from Title I and Three funds. The split is between schools and roads. Uh, Title I, 75% to county roads of $803,304. Title III goes to disaster management in the <clears throat> amount of $88,200. And all the de funds deposited into the county, the total was $1,071,073. You subtract uh, the two I mentioned. That gives us total into the county $891,510 about. We subtract our ONC dues of $31,000, fifteen. That gives us a remaining balance still of $148,548. So even though Gary said it was general funds, we are getting money in to pay for these dues. Um, Gary, the remaining $148,000, has that been designated for something? I just don't know. Uh, generally, it goes to it's goes it's returned to the general fund and it's used for either public safety or transportation. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> Commissioner Fisher, you have your hand up. Oh, you got it before I even got to. <laughs> now I got to remember what my question is. Thank you for the recap on. Well, I on asked. The dollars. I asked ahead of time because I wanted yeah, to make good. sure I knew we were getting money. I wanted to make sure we could afford the dues. Right, and the dues are paid out of the revenue received. It's paid from the general fund, so all, all this income goes to the general fund. There's multiple sources, so yes, I'm answering your question, yes, but 
Yes. Yeah. Well, that's just what I wanted <laughs> yes. wanted to know. And we don't have to be part of this organization. In order we to do receive. not. We receive those monies. Chair Smith mentioned whether we're a part of the organization or not. But being a member helps. It helps. It helps. But it's not required for us to receive those dollars. And then who is our? Is it Chair Smith who's our liaison with this group? It's me. Or Commissioner Shaw. Okay. So I would be interested to know what they are doing. I know that when I was a newer commissioner, there were concerns about some of the lobbying activities. And so this board chose not to pay the dues. And I would be interested in having updates as to what they're doing. I know for me, personally, when I was a very new commissioner, very new, and I went to a WIR conference, and there was a presentation that was done, I found it very valuable and informative, but having regular updates would be good. It's like we do with Association of Oregon Counties mm -hmm. and our different work and Martha with National Association of Counties. I'm gonna turn this over to Commissioner Scholl, his hand up, maybe he can answer your questions. Yes, I was in Roseburg uh, in December for the meeting of the Oregon and California Counties Association. And um, I believe that our uh, association with the ONC Association is uh, very important because they, they work hard to protect uh, our interests in the harvest of our forest products. And without them, I believe that the federal government might start to whittle away at these proceeds that come to the county. So I recommend that we pay these dues and uh, I will give you a report from the next meeting of ONC counties. And uh, matter of fact, you're going helps. to Coos Bay this week. Yeah, with that's Commissioner Scholl. Yes, I am. And uh, you bring back a report on that. Yes, no and doubt. I want to thank you for your service uh, to that. As I thank all my commissioners for their association with our county or statewide county organization. Yeah, I had a call in yesterday to the executive director of ONC uh, Counties Association, and uh, he was busy, so he's going to give me a call back today, and I'll send you all a memo Great. as a result of that phone call. Thank you yeah. very much. One thing that I would be interested in knowing and would be good, and I wish I could had more time to be part of everything that we're involved in, but just the forest management, so harvesting is one aspect of forest management, but forests and our own sea lands also manage for recreation, and there's the opportunity to sequester carbon or to have carbon credits as we look more towards climate change. So those other aspects of where we're moving with our own sea lands and collectively across the state, if you could just put that on your okay. list to um, discuss with that group, I think knowing about that would be valuable for all of us. Okay. Um, you mentioned uh, the lobbyist effort. Um, were you thinking that was a federal land subcommittee of natural resources that wanted to hire a federal lobbyist and that did not happen and therefore no. we got a refund in dues? Gary may recall, I don't know if Gary was county administrator, and I honestly can't remember all of the specifics, but there, Gary, you want to, do you know this? Or maybe we should bring it back at another time uh, to, uh, to just share, because I don't want to miss, I don't want to misspeak. And I was not the lead on this group, and I don't remember which commissioner was at the uh, time. I was public and government affairs director at the time, so it was prior to 2019. There was, uh, the, the, the real issue started when um, the, associate, the Association of Oregon Sea Counties opposed Senator Wyden in his efforts to pass the ONC lands bill that had passed the House, made it to the Senate. And there were some uh, uh, disagreements there that highly offended Senator Wyden and uh, impacted us as a member of the association. Uh, and so that caused some dis uh, unfortunate business between the senator and our office, our county, and other member agencies. And then there were some disagreements about uh, a monument designation in Southern Oregon uh, that the association had a different opinion than at the time, uh, I guess, was President Trump. Um, and so there was another disconnect. So at that time, our county decided to separate and withdraw our dues. Mm -hmm. So, but all those have been resolved since then. Good. Thank you, Gary. Thank what you, Gary. Memory. Wow, I know. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so if there's no further questions, I'll entertain a motion to pay the dues for ONC County of thirty-one thousand fifteen dollars. So moved. Second. Commissioner Scholl has moved to pay the dues for ONC counties of 
$31,015. Commissioner Fisher has second the motion. Any further discussion? Yep. Just yep. updates, please. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, no other discussion. Tony, please call the poll. Commissioner Scholl? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Chair Smith? Aye. Motion passes 3-0. Thank you very much, Commissioners. Gary, what's Great. next? Thank you. We'll pay that uh, the dues. Next, Advisory Board and Commission appointments. Tony, go ahead, please. The Clackamas County Vector Control District currently has one opening on their board. Through a recruitment process, two applications were received. One application was later rescinded. The recommendation is as follows. Christine Cannon. I'll entertain a motion to approve Christine Cannon. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So moved. Seconded. Uh, Commissioner Fisher has moved for the appointment of Christine Cannon for the Vector Control Board. Commissioner Shaw has seconded that motion. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Tony, please take the poll. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Scholl? Aye. Chair Smith? Aye. Motion passes 3-0. Thank you, Commissioners. Next up is the Clackamas Workforce Partnership. Currently has four openings on their commission. Through a recruitment process, one application and two reapplications were received. The recommendation is as follows. Eric Johnston. Doug Franklin, Jenny Perrin. I'll entertain a motion for the approval of the Clackamas County Workforce Partnership for the slate of three candidates that Tony just mentioned. So moved. Seconded. Commissioner Fisher has moved that motion. Commissioner Scholl has seconded it. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Tony, would you please call the poll? Commissioner Scholl? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Chair Smith? Aye. Motion passes 3-0. Thank you, Tony. Uh, next, commissioners, a review of your business meeting agenda for this Thursday, April, 20, April 21st, 2022 at 10 a.m. You'll hear an update from County Clerk Sherry Hall on the elections for the May elections. You'll have a public hearing, which is a second reading of an ordinance amending the county code for vehicle registration fee, uh, the trailer fee reduction. And then you have all the consent agenda items you approved today. If you have any questions on any item, please let me know, and we're happy to get that answer to you before Thursday. Next, uh, Chair Smith would like to discuss prioritizing county construction projects. Yes, Commissioners, I know this is um, a difficult... Um, you know, we've been fortunate to receive funding and approval for county construction projects that are badly needed. Uh, because of all the ARPA funds that have come into our county, because of uh, increasing inflation, the cost overruns are very difficult to meet. We do not have, in most cases, county general funds and or ARPA funds to cover the costs based on our uh, county general fund is basically spoken for. There's a little bit of room here and there. And ARPA funds are restricted in what we could use. Uh, I'm going to list, I have identified with uh, staff eight construction projects. Uh, that we have slated up. And also, I want us to consider criteria, how we decide on what projects we're going to move forward on or what projects we are going to continue on. And so if you don't mind, if you give me a little leeway, I'd like to read the eight construction projects, and then, and then we can talk about the criteria. The Transportation Maintenance Facility, it's a P3 model, developer, I build to our specs. Uh, it's in progress. Uh, I think we've already covered the contingency on that, and I believe that is on time. I just wanted to make mention of that. That project is on Beaver Creek Road. The county courthouse, uh, we have the lead on that. Um, the city, uh, city of Oregon City will be giving permits. We received a $94.5 million match for that uh, going forward. That's very important. The Gladstone uh, Library Project, uh, we are the lead on that. It's a city property, Concord Library, and NCPRD Community Center Park. We are the lead on that, County Bonding Authority, and it's NCPRD property. Milwaukee Bay Park, NCB, NCPRD project lead. Other sources of funding, but that is City of Milwaukee property. OSU Extension Center. Oregon State University is the project lead, County Bonding Authority, and we the property is over there across uh, from Beaver Creek Road, considered Red Soils Campus. They have saved a considerable amount of money through the uh, bond levy, and they have been 
really saving a lot of money on that. Volunteers in Medicine. Um, Volunteers in Medicine group is the lead on that. We paid uh, 650000 for a community block grant from the federal government and Rod Cook. It's on college, Clackamas Community College property. Uh, I believe that we are out of that now too. So moving forward, and I've talked with staff, I've talked to some of my fellow commissioners about this. I would like us to consider some criteria. I'm going to throw four things out that I think is very important. Who does this project benefit and serve? And that means, do all citizens of Clackamas, does it benefit the entire um, good of Clackamas County residents? Secondly, is it a core county service? Third, is there private, state, federal, or other matching dollars going forward, or are we, or are we expected to fit 95% of the project out of funds, in most cases, which we don't have even before the cost of inflation went up? And can the county general fund support the project? I have identified three projects on this list, commissioners, that meet all the criteria that I've mentioned. And that is there's at least 50% funding available. And they are, um, they would benefit all citizens of Clackamas County. And we probably need to proceed ahead on those. Now, one of them is the courthouse project. We will be hearing a policy session on that soon about how we want to move forward. There is an opportunity to go back to the legislature and the Oregon Justice Department to um, ask for more money. I don't think anybody foresaw, even the legislature when they approved this, that the cost overruns would be what they are, and we're really not certain what they are, but they're pretty high. Multnomah County did that three times in the construction of their new courthouse, so it's not like it's, they haven't seen that before. The next project is the Oregon um, State University Extension Service. They have saved about Elizabeth, 10, they, thank you for that, I appreciate that. $10 million from the tax base uh, that, that we all pay into. Uh, that project um, is coming in higher. When I was a commissioner last time, we agreed to give the extension agency bonding authority that they could borrow and pay the rest on that, and they are in a situation now that they can afford the payments because they will stop saving so much money. And that may be a little bit higher. We're sharpening our numbers. Eight million, so it's a total project cost of eight million. So that would be at 18 million. And the numbers are being worked on then. Um, Nancy Bush is working on that project because they're going to seek bonding authority and interest rates are rising. So I think we need to strike hot on that one. They have been working on this for decades to get that building done. And the third project is the f livestock born at the county fairgrounds, which our legislative partners have put in 4.8 million. I talked to the project manager at uh, facilities. They're still getting their A and E completed to try to figure out what our costs on that going forward. And I will consider bring it to the board a request to use ARPA funds if that project is. Uh, comes in over budget, which I suspect it will because everything else is. So those are the projects that I would like us to think about and consider moving forward on. Okay, I've said a lot. So commissioners, would you like to, to opine on any of this? Mm -hmm. Mr. Scholl. Yeah, th that <clears throat> your recommendations, your top three makes sense. We are living in a time of extreme uh, rising costs and construction projects. Um, the more that these projects have socked away to go towards the construction, the better. Uh, so we got to make a decision. We do. We, we have to step forward on something. Right, we do. And we're also mindful of the fact I've talked to three separate folks in the construction industry. They're possibly seeing that in prices could come down on some commodities as early as the end of summer or uh, fall, which steads us very well for the courthouse project. It may be all of these. 
so we're in very difficult times moving forward, but we, we do need to watch this. You know, we watch it daily. I mean, I'm, it's one of the, the first things I do when I come in in the morning, you know, how's this project going? And I'm always bugging Nancy Bush or poor Gary about any new information I hear on the streets. It's because I'm so mindful of our budget and well, we're just really keeping a, a tight grip on the funds that we have because um, it's just an infrastructure situation we have at Clackamas County that has not been dealt with really in decades and we're trying to do something about it. And I really do appreciate the support of commissioners on this. Gary? So I would suggest, uh, let staff, uh, thank you for sharing all this. We'll put a little uh, policy session report together with all of this criteria, mm -hmm. uh, update on all the projects mentioned, and then the board can discuss this at a policy session. Thank you, Gary. Okay. Up next. Okay, next final item is commissioner communications. Mm. Mm. Who wants to go first? Uh, Chair, um, I was going to speak about the ONC dues and uh, Oh. Proceeds, but we already covered that pretty well. Sorry about that. And and uh, I, like I said, I have a no. That's no problem. I've got a call from the executive director coming in today, and I'll let you know the outcome of that is call. Is that Rocky Mave? Yes, it is. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then of course I'll be going to Coos Bay on Thursday for the AOC meeting. Yes. Okay. Yes. So. And. Um, and you'll be absent for our board meeting on Thursday. Yeah, I'm gonna have, it's, the meeting's at 3 o'clock in Coos Bay, and unless I go at light speed, I won't get there in time if I stay for the meeting on yeah, Thursday that's morning. Yeah, that's a long day. Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, it's a long drive. Thank you. Anything else, Commissioner Scholl? Uh, no, thank you. Commissioner Fisher, do you have anything? I attended last night. Gosh, I can't remember what the name of the event was. It was John Powell, professor from Berkeley, our equity office along with the equity offices from around the region sponsored I think they sponsored the event so Martine asked me to attend I attended Commissioner Savas attended it was I felt almost like I was in law school in constitutional law when I would sit and listen to the professor talk and I kind of like never knew what he was saying that I was totally engaged and almost suspended in time because it was, um, it just took me back really? listening to a professor. But really the concepts, and I'm hoping we get the opportunity to learn more and discuss it as a board, but the ideas are, it's like equity 2.0. It's looking beyond what we have put the frame in of what's equity, diversity, and inclusion, and looking at how do we um, create policy that brings everyone mm -hmm. up and not have the divisions. And it's a lot based on what does it mean to create belonging communities and to facilitate that. And it was fascinating. Really? Many more conversations to come. I learned that there is a group, it's called GER, GER, Government Alliance, Gary, help me, something. Uh, uh, G-A-R-E, uh, uh, I'll, I'll find out. I didn't know about it, but many um, leaders across our communities attend. This started off small, it's grown a lot, and I'm interested in learning more about what they're doing. They're having a conference that's happening like today or tomorrow. Real it's soon. this week. It's Government Alliance on Race and Equity, G A R E, Government Alliance on Race and Equity. So I learned about that. It was great seeing people. We were at the Expo Center, and there were elected leaders from all across the region, city councilors county commissioners, metro councilors, leaders from um, different areas, and it was, it, was, it was not what I expected. Really? I was really glad that I Good. drove the hour from Clackamas <laughs> County through the rain <laughs> to get there on time at 5.30 because it was well worth the conversations and, and, and worth the, um, the information, although it really was a basically got us thinking. I know that the state of Washington is going to be implementing some policy initiatives around this effort, and uh, 
it's it's pretty fascinating. So Gary, I don't know what we should do to get the rest of our board. Paul was there, Martha was going to attend, and then she was out of town. I don't know, Commissioner Scholl, you were signed up to attend, but I don't know that you were. I didn't see you there. Mm -hmm. I, I, did, I didn't make it. I had a okay. You know, scheduling is difficult. Oh, of course, but it's some way to continue the conversation. I'm just putting that on our radar. Check in with Martine, see the best way to get just the, these new ideas. I think it really aligns well with where our values are in Clackamas Good. County. Anything else, Commissioner Fisher? Nope. Good. Uh, last Thursday, we recessed our business meeting early to attend a state of the county hosted by North Clackamas County Chamber of Commerce at the Monarch Hotel. We had a lovely luncheon. All commissioners gave a presentation on the state of the county for the past year. I believe it was well received to a very nice crowd. Uh, it was really a lot of fun to have an in-person meeting and luncheon. It just, it was just great. People were very supportive. Um, and I want to thank the county for going the extra mile and putting on this presentation with our partner, North Clackamas County Chamber. Anything else, Gary? No. Uh, no other business before us today. We are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>